Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today uh, just trying to wind up the topic of clampers you know this is the topic today we discuss is the voltage multiplier circuits right so the same capacitors and diodes the combination of capacitors and diodes are used so that is why I said that we would do this one as well over here now in the previous video I maybe may have told you that that we'll see the book examples in the next video so when I checked the book it was only two examples 2.11 and 2.22 I believe and, and and that was very similar or you could say the exact similar of the last two examples that we saw number first they took an ideal diode they had a bit a, a biased clamper circuit and the next they took a silicon diode and they had a uh, they had a biased clamper circuit so the last two examples that we discussed on this side they were exactly the similar the frequency was given some time period or something like that was unknown again it was a square wave so check it out by yourself you can do it very easily we've already seen them in the previous video so I did not want you to make any more video. I thought it would be a three or four examples so we could make another another video, right? Yes. So anyways, today the topic is folder multiplier circuits. So what is a voltage multiplier circuit? So uh, you, you, you know very well uh, what would it do? As the name suggests, it would multiply something to the input voltage, right? It would multiply something. So that something, depending on that something, then we have a voltage doubler circuit. So which means what? The input would be multiplied with a factor of 2. So in the output, you will get a twice of the input. How is that? We'll see. You have a voltage tripler circuit. So in the tripler would suggest what that the input is multiplied with a factor of three. So the output would be three times the input. Similarly, you have a voltage quadrupler circuit. Quadrupler circuit. So that would be output would be four times that of the input. Yes. Yes. So uh, and and you can further go on and on name it for yourself, whatever it is. So the thing is today that we discuss is the voltage doubler circuit. Okay. Today we, let me keep writing on the board as well. So we discuss is the voltage doubler circuit. So what would it do? The output would be. Now you could suggest that the input is an AC waveform, the output is a DC value, as in case of the half wave rectifier. But in the half wave rectifier, what did you have? You have the output peak value, the peak value of the output is the same as that of the sinusoidal input. If, if the peak value of the sinusoidal input is Vm, the peak value of the DC output is also Vm. Over here, we would have the peak value as twice of vm right use you will be using capacitors so the voltage doubler then comes with two configurations the first one that we are discussing right now is a half wave half wave voltage doubler so vd let's say for voltage doubler and then we'd have a full wave so we'll discuss it over there so let me draw the circuit for the half wave voltage doubler first so let me draw the circuit first so uh yes doubler is half wave yeah so have a look this is a transformer for instance whatever it is we are not interested in the, the core transformer core the primary side the secondary side then you have what you have a capacitor then you have a a diode and then you have what you have another diode in the reverse manner and then you have what another capacitor so let's say we name this capacitor as C1, this diode as D1, this capacitor as C2, this diode as D2. The input, let's say we are not interested in any transformed input or magnitude rate or anything. The main thing that our circuit is getting is this input, right? So we are interested over here. Whatever the magnitude or whatever the transformer is doing, it's, it's stepping up the input, it's stepping down the supply. We're not interested in that, right? Yes. So what happens is we will talk about the sinusoidal input for instance. We will talk about the sinusoidal input and you know the conditions for the diode to be forward or reverse biased. And you also know the charging and the discharging of capacitors from the previous videos. We have seen when the angles properly we have seen them in a greater detail when it charges when it it is, does not charge when the diode is on in the charging so the angles we have already properly seen. We will not go in that sort of a detail over here we, I will only consider the maximum value directly because the capacitor is charged to the maximum value you know that very well and the next thing is that it would not discharge quickly the time constant of discharging tau would would be far greater than the t by 2 value so it would not discharge during the negative cycle where the corresponding diode is off 
Yes? Yes. So, I've said many things. So, the thing is that the tau, the tau value is far greater than T by 2. And one other thing I also said, so let it be when we need, to, I'll tell you again. So, the thing is, you know very well, you know very well that the, that the, that the voltage across the diode, right? So, for, in order for this to be forward biased, the voltage across the diode should be greater than zero. Isn't it? It is. So, which means the voltage across the diode is what? Voltage across the diode V1 is directly V input. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, if, if let's say positive to negative is the polarity. And similarly, the voltage across the diode D2 is minus of V input. Right, so for the diode to be forward biased, for VD1 to be forward biased, the V input should be greater than zero. So, diode will be, D1 would be forward biased. And similarly for this, if the V input is greater, a negative of V input is greater than zero, which implies that V input is less than zero, so the diode D2 would be forward biased. Yes, so this automatically suggests the positive half cycle and the negative half cycle. So let's say for the positive half cycle, if this is the polarity plus minus, right? Yes. So what do you have is plus connected to P side minus connected to N side. You could say it like this as well. D1 is forward biased in this particular case, right? So which means what that uh, D2 is reverse biased because the V input is greater than zero, right? This is the case. V input is greater than zero. So D2 would be reverse biased in this case. So what would happen if you want to draw the equivalent circuit, you could draw it. Let's say I have a plus minus input voltage and the input voltage, let's say I'm taking the maximum peak value, right? The maximum peak value only. Let's say, and this is the capacitor. So this is connected to positive. This one is connected to negative. This would be shorted out if I'm using the ideal diode, right? And the next is open circuit. So nothing to do with that. So what can you do? A current would flow through the circuit. And if a current flows through the circuit, what happens is that uh, you have uh, the, 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 the capacitor voltage Vc1, this would also be equal to Vm, which is the input voltage, it would charge up as a sinusoidal, you know it very well, it would charge as a sinusoidal, but the maximum value that it would attain, the fully charged value, the maximum value is Vm. Capacitor is charged to maximum Vm right yes and now it would not discharge as quickly so this is for the positive half cycle so this has attained a vm value as well as this is in the input so for the positive half cycle this happens next for the negative half cycle let's say i am reversing the polarity so this becomes minus this becomes plus so what happens is this case when negative of v input is greater than zero or v input is less than zero so the diode two would become forward bias and the diode one you could say that you can see d1 is reverse biased in this case so have a look again if i am taking the same circuit i say a minus two plus this time and i take the input value let's say vm the maximum value and you know why i'm taking it because the capacitor is building up vm charge at the maximum value right and then you have this capacitor this capacitor will uh, will have its already assumed charge of Vm, right? The diode D1 is forward bias, D2 would D2 is forward bias like this, and then you have this as your C2. And the next we have an open circuit, that's no problem. So I will, in the conventional current direction, if I say this is a plus, this is a minus, and this is a VC2. So let me apply a KVL in the circuit. So have a look at negative to positive VM. So we have a positive VM. Then you have a minus VC2. And then you have a, a plus VM again. And this is equal to zero. So have a look. VC2 is equal to twice of VM. VC2 is equal to twice of VM. <clears throat> now, Vm is what? Vm is the maximum value. Vm is the peak value. Vm is a single value. So, Vm is a DC value. Yes, a single value, the peak value. Let's say you have a, you have a sinusoidal input of 6 sine of omega t, 10 sine of omega t. So, Vm is what? It's 6. V, in the next is what? It's 10. So, what does this represent? This is a DC value. This is a final value, not changing, not varying. So, this 2 times of Vm is there. 2 times of 6 is 12. 2 times of 10 is 20. So, this is a DC value. So what you do is, if you want to take your voltage double, if you want to take it voltage double that of the that of the input, so you have to take the the output from these two terminals. You take the output across across this capacitor. You take the output across this capacitor. You get the output as two times the peak value as that of the input. 
and is that fine it should be it is right it is yes let's say so are we clear with this we are yes yes uh, d2 will remain off and 0 will discharge to the load and vm so vm has been uh, shifted to two times vm the output is taken across this capacitor so this is just simple and that is why it's known as a voltage doubler right yes the second the second is a full wave voltage doubler full wave voltage doubler now let us consider the circuit so the circuit is like this where is it okay so the circuit is like this let's say you have a transformer we have nothing to do with this just drawing it as the book has drawn transformer core and then you have what you have the secondary side you have a diode then you have a capacitor over here and similarly you have this is a node so you have a, another capacitor over here you have a diode D2 over here right and over here is a node somewhere yes yes so let's say this is a diode D1 this is a capacitor C1 this is a capacitor C2 this is a diode D2 right the input that we are interested in is across this because this is our supply right so we input i would write over here this is the supply voltage vs supply so we are requiring let our maybe our requirement is uh, of the input is less than vs so this is a step down transformer maybe maybe our supply is uh, requirement is greater than that our input requirement of the circuit is greater than that of the supply so this is a step up transformer we are not interested the thing that we are interested in is the input to our circuit yes yes the thing is which i forgot to mention over here is that the capacitors that i am using over here they should be initially discharged initially discharged capacitors yes yes so they should not have any charge from the beginning so these are the two points that you need to remember till now yes yes now again let considering a sinusoidal input but i will consider only the peak value vm why again because the capacitor will build up to the maximum of vm yes yes so let's say we discuss it the positive cycle so for the positive cycle have a look if this is the plus terminal this is the minus terminal so diode d1 is being forward biased diode d2 is being reverse biased right yes so when is the positive cycle when is the positive cycle so the diode d1 is being uh, forward biased d2 is being reverse biased right so let's say we, we draw the equivalent circuit for instance this is my input plus minus input this is being forward biased we have a capacitor c1 let me name it as a vc1 the voltage across it so this is complete and then next is an open circuit so you need to try it so what do you have plus connected over here minus connected over here a current would flow so vc1 becomes equal to the v input which let's suppose i'm considering only the peak value vm yes yes now it will have a cert it will have a such an amount of time constant it would not discharge during the next cycle where this d1 is off so in the next cycle that is in the negative half cycle so let's say if this is negative this is positive the negative half cycle has arrived so what would you do is what would you do is that this is negative this is positive so what will happen this d1 is reverse biased so the time constant of this capacitor is such that that it would not discharge during the period where d1 is reverse biased which means it would not discharge during the negative half cycle you know it again why am i saying it again and again so i'm sorry so this is open circuited right it is it is right so what do you have you have your circuit to be like this you have your circuit to be like this this diode is shorted this is a capacitor c2 let me name it as a vc2 the voltage across it and then it goes like this yes yes so this is a vm let's say 
and the plus connected over here the minus connected over here so we see two so have a look you have a plus two uh, or moving in this direction negative two positive is vm and then positive to negative vc2 so vc2 is again equal to vm yes yes now now if you need what a uh, 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 twice times uh, that a uh, twice times the input value so you need to take the output where you need to take the output across this the, the series combination of the two so what are the polarities this is the polarity plus minus this is the polarity plus minus for this and let's say this is the polarity plus minus for this as well so which means what that v naught is equal to vc1 plus vc2 which is equal to vm plus vm so this implies what that again v naught has become equal to twice of vm so you've got another value you've got a value that is twice the peak, that is twice the peak value provided by the input yes yes okay so the thing is then uh, one thing you should also keep in mind is the piv rating so the piv rating in this case and in that case for both the cases for each of the diode is twice of vm and you know why piv rating of each diode in both the cases is twice of vm and let me just confirm this point from the book is it twice of vm for both or not it is it is so without the center taping you are getting a twice of vm and you know what is the difference and whatever it is so this was just all about the voltage doubler circuits you have obtained the output where the peak value is twice that the peak value of the input the input is a sinusoid the output is a dc value the same as a rectifier circuit but in the rectifier you have a limitation you will get the same peak as you got in the input so i believe that is it over here now what is the difference between a half wave and a full wave voltage doubler let it be your homework let me give you a point is the ripple voltage leave the radar voltage just let it go just let the difference go or if you are interested read out the book the book has not gone into detail if you know anything about it what's the difference between a half a voltage doubler and a full wave voltage doubler let me know in the comment section that is an assignment for you i've explained both of them half wave full wave what is the difference i've told you the peak inverse rating tell me the difference in between the two in the comment section till the next video i say goodbye